something. So yeah, the key here is superposition principle. We get y equals c1 e to the 3x plus c2 e to the minus 3x. And right now, since we're not actually finding them, we just kind of want to lay down the framework. We verify that this is the general solution by computing the Ronskian of the two functions, which are e to the 3x, e to the minus 3x. So we do the determinant of e to the 3x, e to the minus 3x, and then what's this bottom row? Uh-huh. So the determinant there, we'd get uh, negative 3 times e to the 0, so just negative 3, minus 3 times e to the 0, so just 3. So that equals negative 6, which never equals 0. Therefore, y1, y2 are linearly independent. and form a fundamental set. Which means that y equals c1 e to the 3x plus c2 e to the minus 3x is the general solution. Okay. We're not always going to be this detailed, by the way. We're just kind of explaining things now. When we actually start solving these things, I mean, you're going to look at this equation. You're going to have a nice technique to actually go ahead and solve this. And within a matter of a few, maybe a minute or two, you'll actually know that this is the solution right here. And we're already going to know that all the conditions are met. Yes? And then we, have, we don't have a linearly independent set. So... Even though, good question, so even though these might be solutions to the Diffie-Q, and even though when you use the superposition principle, this would be a solution, it's not the general one. It would just be another one that also happens to work. Okay? All right. Moving on to the last equation, star 2. So now for non-homogeneous linear differential equations. <clears throat> Some intro uh, terminology. Any function y sub p free of arbitrary parameters. is called a particular solution. You know, quick one. If we have y double prime plus 9y equals 27, anyone see a quick particular solution here? y equals 3. Okay, so obviously the derivative here would be 0, but 9 times 3 is 27. Okay, so we say that this is a particular solution because there's no arbitrary parameters involved. It, it's 3. It's not like c1 times 3 or anything like that. Okay. Now the solution to the non-homogeneous linear differential equation, which was star 2, so basically all the same stuff we just talked about, except now instead of equaling 0, it equals some function, right, g of x, or a constant. To save some time, I'm going to say this. All the stuff we just talked about is the same. And what I mean by that is, Ronskians are still in effect. 
linearly independent stuff is still in effect. Superposition principle is still in effect. Okay, the only, the only difference here, the only difference is this. Is that the general solution is going to look like this. y equals c1y1 plus c2y2 and so on down to whatever order we have plus the particular solution to the non-homogeneous linear differential equation. So we're still doing superposition principle, if you think about it, because these first k terms are found by superposition, right? And if we know a particular solution, like up here, that 3 works, then we could also use superposition here. And then we're, this is what we call the general solution. Okay, um, we do have a condensed notation for this. Sometimes we call this y c of x plus y p of x. This is referring to the complementary function. That's what we call it. Complementary function or solution. And then <clears throat> this one here, obviously it's still the same. This is just any particular solution. Okay, so the general solution, as long as all those conditions that we just talked about are met, is exactly this. Okay. Um, to add to that, let's also briefly talk about another superposition principle. If yp1, yp2, and so on, y, whoops, ypk are k particular solutions corresponding to g1 of x, g2 of x, g sub k of x. Of the linear differential equation equal to g1 of x plus g2 of x plus g sub k of x. Okay, so basically what we're doing is looking at star 2, but instead of having just one function, g1 of x, maybe we're splitting it up. There's a lot of different terms, and we're calling them g1 plus g2, and so on. Okay? Then what we're going to do is pretty much match these up. So if yp1 matches up with g1 and yp2 matches up with g2, Okay, then yp equals yp1 of x plus yp2 of x, and so on, is a particular solution. to the equation. So I mean, I think with a quick example we can clear this up. Let's say that we have yp1 
equal to negative 4x squared. Uh, yp2 equal to e to the 2x and yp3 equal to x e to the x. Let's say these are particular solutions to three differential equations y double prime minus 3y prime plus 4y equals negative 16x squared plus 24x minus 8. Then we have the same Diffie Q on the left with some other functions. Two e to the two x, two x e to the x minus e to the x. Okay, so all I'm saying is yp1, it's a particular solution that works for this first one. yp2, particular solution that works for this second one. And then yp3 is a particular solution that works for this third one. Okay? Then by the superposition principle for particular solutions, okay, we can combine all of these into one function, call it y, equal to minus 4x squared, plus e to the 2x, plus x e to the x. And that will be a solution to y double prime minus 3y prime plus 4y equal to what? What's that? Not going to equal 0. And? Add them all up, yeah. So if all three of these work for each of these differential equations, since we have the same function on the left-hand side, if I add all three of these functions up, Okay, so this part, this part, and this part, this was satisfied by yp1, this was satisfied by one yp2, this was satisfied by yp3, and then we could just combine all those three particular solutions. So then here we have, um, you know what, I should probably use this notation, y sub p. And that's pretty much it, okay? Um, should I? Okay, so I mean, I don't have to write all this stuff down, but in general, when we start working with these differential equations and we start applying these to some actual applications um, in physics or some other real-life scenarios. These differential equations, okay, this represents some kind of input function for some system that we have, okay, which maybe you can think of it this way. This represents some system, some behavior. This over here is typically called like an input, or a for, uh, not an input, a... Um, a forcing function, uh, how else can we call it? Excitation function. I think it'll make more sense when we start doing the applications, but from this, the actual solution is what we call the output. Okay, and I can clarify this more later, but if this is equal to zero, that means that there's no external force, no driving force, nothing. It's just the system as is. If there's some function over here, that means that there's something else going on. I think that's pretty much the best way to think about it. Okay? All right, I'll see you guys on Monday. And we are officially done with...